Hello everyone. It's an honor to be part of 2020's Ben Design Week and it's certainly a privilege to have the opportunity to talk to you all today. Um, you represent the current and next generation of creative leaders at a really critical time. I think we could all agree with that. And so I want to take this moment to share with you what I believe will be the creative leadership characteristics that we will need more of in the future more of to intentionally drive lasting positive cultural impact in the world today and tomorrow that ultimately leads us to this idea and ideal of equality by design. So to do that, you know, we have to start with the current landscape in America. And I believe all of us know we are at an inflection point as we've never seen before. And there is a cultural reckoning and revolution to bring an end to racial injustice and inequality. The deaths of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and too many others, along with the recent shooting of Jacob Blake, has brought many of us a sense of urgency to create awareness and most of all action for change through our creative pursuits. So, Last week, I took my daughter, who's a high school senior and who's also an aspiring creative director. I'm not going to argue with that. I think uh, the world needs more thoughtful creative directors every day. Um, and I took her down to the protest art murals in downtown Portland, and I wanted her to see the important role that artists and designers play as visual storytellers in moments like this. They reveal the truth in ways that connect people emotionally to movements that we see today. Um, George Floyd's death brought back memories of my own experiences in Minneapolis. I was born and raised and attended the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. At that time, there was just this great distance and mistrust between the black community and law enforcement. And I'm saddened to say that that mistrust and distance continues to exist today. So while I'm disappointed and saddened by that, I'm also extremely motivated and hopeful because this inflection point is this incredible opportunity and stage for creatives across all disciplines to really take the stage and lead the transformation into a better tomorrow. If you simply look at the outpouring of creativity right now in the palm of your hand, you'll see artists and designers every day amplifying the Black Lives Matter movement like never before, using their work to stir emotions and unify people through a common cause. Now, this creative work serves as a catalyst. Not only does it provoke reflection, but it also creates action both by inviting people into the conversation through inspiration and most importantly, empowering them to act through education. So why us? Why do I feel this moment for creatives uh, is the one to take the stage? What is it about us that the world needs more of right now? Well, we're the crazy ones. Um, as right side of the brain thinkers who see things in nonlinear ways, we're able to see what others see, but truly find what others don't and reveal it. We're the daydreamers who ask the question, what if, and say, why not? We're also the quiet ones. If you're like me, oftentimes you simply want to speak through your work, your creativity. And this is a time where we need the quiet voices to speak the loudest through their craft. And believe me, as I look across the landscape, the door is open for the quiet voices, certainly within the field of creativity. It's wide open for us. And finally, the diverse ones. I believe diversity is oxygen. It's the air that breathes life into the creative process of innovation. This is the time where all of us have to help amplify the diverse voices across all creative disciplines. So, as I said, I do believe there are leadership traits within the persona of the future that we have to elevate, right? And this means across 
institutions and brands alike. Um, this will allow us to drive the kind of positive cultural change in the future that I believe we all need. And by the way, when I say leader, I mean all of us, whether you're the leader of one or the leader of many. So what are the characteristics that make up that consumer persona? Um, what are those traits that people are going to be able to feel when they are around us through our actions? What are the traits that we can be more intentional about in the way we live and express through our craft and in the way we engage with one another? So what I'll do is I'll use uh, examples uh, through my Nike career that I had the privilege of working on to illustrate some of these characteristics. So the first trait is visionary. Uh, this ability to imagine a better future and express it in a way that really compels people to build that future with you. When it comes to being a visionary, we creatives have an advantage. You could call it a superpower. We don't just talk about the vision and where we could go, we show it. So that ability to fully visualize or prototype a vision really accelerates people's ability to connect with that vision on an emotional level. You see this image here with LeBron James called Together, which as you pan out from that image, it reveals the world's largest team huddle. It's a vision that shows the power of unity through people of all walks of life. Now, I want to further illustrate this characteristic of visionary. Uh, let's go back to 2017 to the Nike Equality Campaign. And at the time, we as a creative team drew a lot of inspiration from Nelson Mandela. And specifically, how he used sports in post-apartheid South Africa, specifically rugby, as this vehicle to unify people across the country, both black and white. And as he says in the quote here, sport has the power to unite people in a way that little else does. The Equality Campaign allowed us to address racial injustice and inequality in America that was happening around us with far too much frequency. And the vision for the campaign that we started with was clear. That is, the ball should bounce the same for everyone in America, just as it does within sports. And we launched our equality film at the Grammys that year, narrated by the actor Michael B. Jordan, with music created by the great Alicia Keys. Let's take a look. Is this the land history promised? Here, within these lines, On this concrete court, this patch of turf, here you're defined by your actions, not your looks or beliefs. Equality should have no boundaries. The bonds we find here should run past these lines. It's been a long, long time coming. Opportunity should not discriminate. The ball should bounce the same for everyone. Change gonna come. Worth should outshine color. If we can be equals here, we can be equals everywhere. So this characteristic of being a visionary leader is, as we said, that ability to articulate an idea of the future in an insightful and imaginative way. So going forward, how can we as a designer continue to put forth a vision of a better world? What sources of inspiration can we draw from to illustrate that vision? And how can we use our art as an accelerator for positive change 
by bringing the vision to life in an arresting and emotive way. So the second characteristic uh, that I want to bring to life is empathy. Empathy, as you know, is so central to the creative disciplines. When we talk about empathy, it's usually turned outward as we focus on understanding the human needs. So we can continue to create by doing that the most meaningful and beneficial design solutions. But for this section, I want to focus on empathy's role internally, specifically within our industry's need to drive a deeper diversity and inclusion conversation and agenda. One that can greatly improve black and brown designer representation and experiences within brands, agencies, and institutions. And that agenda has to start by creating the space to listen to what that experience is currently like for black and brown creatives. Their voice should help determine your path as a leader or employer. When you hear from these creatives, it's really important to lean in and hear about what it's like to sometimes be the only one in the room like you, sometimes every day. What it feels like to experience unconscious bias and at times be held to a different standard. What the impact is when you don't see others like you in leadership positions. Also, what it's like to carry recent events on your shoulders like we see around us today into work every day and what's the effect that that has. And almost most importantly, what it's like sometimes not being able to show up as your full self for fear that you might be penalized for it. Well, by leading with empathy and actively listening and learning about these experiences and stories, you truly can start to begin to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And this helps us move past simply using numbers and spreadsheets to define our progress on diversity, representation, and equity. And at times that happens. And instead to create, truly create an environment where one is not only invited, but most importantly, seen and supported. You know, personally, I've been very fortunate um, to benefit from empathetic creative leadership over my own career. Um, I was part of a black student affinity group created by my design college. Uh, it was a great place to come together and connect with each other and, and more importantly, support one another. Um, I was part of Nike's first minority internship program back in 1992. I know I'm dating myself there, but that really gave me that invitation and opportunity to accelerate my career. And I had an incredible privilege to be a leader and advisor for the Black Employee Network at Nike for almost two decades. And that definitely gave me the opportunity uh, to mentor, represent, and promote so many talented Black designers, advertisers, and marketers. So with that said, what type of actions can we take as a design community to increase diverse representation? Well, it starts by creating and publishing commitments and developing action plans for those commitments. Those commitments could explore some of these following themes. This is just the start. How can you recruit differently? How can you take more time look at broader sources, and really dive into a lot of these new networks that have come forth through the, the great work by many leaders. Uh, networks for black and brown creatives uh, are available uh, for us to look at recruiting a bit differently. How can you create new internship programs and have stronger relationships with colleges and universities in those creative fields? How can you help start affinity groups for people of color, either as an advocate or a member. And not only that, there's a lot of leaders and people who outside of their day job do a lot of volunteering and mentoring. Um, and oftentimes it can be seen that it takes away from uh, the day-to-day the -day work that they're supposed to be doing. And I would say that if anything, it's going to enrich their ability to deliver great results by being a mentor 
and a leader uh, in driving this diversity across our industry. And maybe one of the more important areas um, is how do we develop programs that make the creative paths more viable options specifically for high school students of color and their families. Oftentimes, uh, a path within the fields of design isn't seen as a potential path. Um, certainly when you're gonna pursue a, a, a secondary degree. So how can we instill a level of both belief within high school students of color that they have within them what it takes to go down that creative path, um, as well as show them put the potential of what that choice will have, not only professionally, but culturally, the impact that it will have on society and the world. So to close this section, as a design industry, look, I, I do believe that we're all looking to have a greater positive impact on society. And certainly greater empathetic leadership will allow us to more evenly distribute all the incredible tools, the vision, the solutions that the creative industry provides. And therefore, we'll be able to truly pay it back to really serve uh, black and brown communities through our talents. Now, the third leadership trait is collaborative. Uh, and I believe when it comes to starting and maintaining a cultural movement at scale, I believe creativity is a team sport. Now, of course, I also know that too many cooks in the kitchen can lead to a pretty bad meal. And we've all had those experiences when you start to create by consensus. But truly, when we're talking about cultural change at scale, it does take radical creative collaboration. You need the voice of logic and practicality, and you also need the voice of the dreamer and the rule breaker, all the while building on each other's ideas. Now, this is a symbolic of, example of that. This is a street mural in Harlem, right? And it's an example of radical creative collaboration to make a statement of protest and hope. If you look at the team that brought this to life, you have the, the creative powerhouse, the Rockwell Group, um, which provided urban planning and architectural expertise. You have the United Scenic Artists who came in and stenciled the letters and laid those down. And then you have these very prolific, dynamic, eight local artists that brought the letter forms to life to really express these, these stories, all coming together to protest police brutality and racial injustice. And these are just, this is just one example. And of course, in, I'm sure in your town or city, you have ones as well. I wanna share a project that really represents this power of radical creative collaboration and one I had the privilege of, of working on. It, it really had the multiplying effect that can happen uh, when two brands join forces to promote a better world. And this goes back to 2010, and the World Cup of Soccer was held in Johannesburg, South Africa. And on the one hand, this is a place where over 350,000 kids participate in football almost daily, but they obviously lack proper facilities and coaching. Unfortunately, South Africa is also a place where HIV and AIDS infects more people than in any other country in the world. So how could we use the sport of football and the moment of the World Cup to improve education and services for HIV for South Africa youths? So back to that power of collaboration, we started by partnering with Project Red. And if you know, Project Red partners with brands to create products and services and experiences that raise awareness to end HIV and AIDS. And we partnered with Project Red through a concept called Lace Up, Save Lives. When someone around the world would buy a pair of these Nike Red laces, Nike contributed money to support programs that offer education, medication on the ground and in Africa. And it was incredible to see the support through this program. 
We also wanted to take it a step further so it could really be felt on the ground in South Africa. And we designed the football training center in Soweto, where 20,000 young footballers every year had the chance to exercise their football talents while also receiving access to HIV AIDS education through football life skills programming. So this is an example of the power of creative radical collaboration and how in this case, sport education and medication can unite and lift up underserved and really underrepresented communities. So I ask you, what radical collaborations might you bring together in the future to bring about positive social change at scale? We, the creative industry, can have an incredible multiplying effect by bringing these different entities and points of inspiration together. The final leadership trait is courageousness. And I do believe we are at a time that requires it more than ever. This is not a time to play it safe, especially in the creative arena that we live in. And of course, being courageous is in our DNA. Um, every day we have to represent our work, which is highly personal um, and express our POV to our audience and to our clients. Colin Kaepernick, I feel, is the embodiment of what it means to be courageous. Here you see portraits of Colin shot by the photographer and humanitarian Platon, who is someone I'm proud to call a friend. Um, these photos were from the final campaign I took part in before I retired last February. And each of these photos represents seven moments and seven values for Colin. And these photos were donated to the African American Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C., along with many other of Platon's photos that he created over the years of important champions of equality in America. But I want to go back to September of 2016, when Colin Kaepernick kneeled for the first time during the national anthem. And he did this to protest racial injustice and police brutality. Now, leading up to that point, too many unarmed black people were killed by law enforcement, from Trayvon Martin to Eric Garner and too many others. Now, when Colin knelt, um, the public sentiment in a lot of areas at that time felt Colin was disrespecting the flag and the country. And fast forward to the summer of 2017, Colin still didn't have a team to play, even though he was easily one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL at that time. And during that time, Colin came to campus, the Nike campus, and we had a small intimate lunch with Colin. And I had the great privilege to sit next to Colin and really lean in and listen to his words. And he said it over and over again that this movement, this protest was not about him. It was what the protest represented and wanted to bring and shed light to and bring an end to racial injustice and police brutality. Colin made it clear at the time that he wasn't interested in his own campaign. Now, we felt that there was a way we could amplify Colin's voice and do it in a way through a campaign that would represent all sports and all athletes and help lift everyone to that higher purpose and create the change that we passionately believed in as a brand at the time. And ultimately this became the Just Do It Crazy Dreams campaign narrated by Colin Kaepernick, featuring athletes like Serena Williams and LeBron James sharing their stories and inspiring people saying, it's only a crazy dream until you do it. Not once did we discuss what kind of impact this would have on our business. This was about creating profits of a completely different kind. So, yes, Nike, we had people decide that they didn't want to buy our products, uh, but that goes with the territory when you stand with conviction behind the athletes that represent your brand. 
Now, what Colin Kaepernick started is now a movement, as you can see across sports, you see LeBron James and the NBA players showing their solidarity in taking a knee to protest racial injustice. And that narrative has shifted and the sentiment has shifted to go from disrespecting the flag or being unpatriotic to the greater understanding by far more people today about peacefully protesting racial injustice. Now, as you can see across all the professional sport leagues, their commissioners support this act. You see everyone from the cricket players here to the football teams in Europe, Bubba Wallace, NASCAR's only top black driver, and the women of the WNBA. And finally, recently, we saw Naomi Osaka win the US Open while protesting the victims of police brutality. And it's just really impossible not to be moved by these heroics. So I use this movement that Colin led as a way to illustrate not only the trait of courageousness, but all four creative leadership characteristics that we will need more of. His acts and leadership showed the vision that it was needed to convey, the empathy that it embodied, and the collaboration it took to get the message out, all of which served as a catalyst to see the momentum in this movement that we see today. And I close with where I started. We as creatives have so much to give to this moment, right? This is time for us to take the stage. Let's help close the distance between the privileged and the underserved, and most importantly, between us and our potential as a human race. Thank you. Mm -hmm.